In my last video, I quote unquote remastered scenes from my favorite show, Avatar The Last Airbender. And by remastered, I mean I expanded the original show's 4x3 aspect ratio into a widescreen format without cropping the image as both a challenge for myself and as a personal project. I had an absolute blast with this project since I was doing something that I've wanted for the longest time. It was also my first time animating something and I found it to be a very challenging yet rewarding experience. One thing I noticed, looking back and also from the comments, was that since I had chosen segments from the episode that were mainly stationary, the scenes felt a little bit empty and still had that 4x3 flair. Which isn't a bad thing, but I also just wanted to try something different. I chose even more clips from the first episode of Avatar The Last Airbender, and I also decided that I wanted to focus on shots that included motion from our main characters. No more iceberg drawing simulator, and instead I wanted to focus on our protagonists moving in and out of the frame. I also tried to physically move the scene either to the left or to the right to remove that 4x3 feeling to the best of my ability. And just like my previous video, I did everything on my iPad Air using my Apple Pencil. The programs I used were mainly Procreate Dreams and a tiny bit of Procreate. I also documented the whole process yet again. So please like the video if you enjoy it, subscribe if you want to see more content from yours truly, and most importantly, please enjoy the video. The very first scene in our new project picks up after Sokka and Katara discover this massive iceberg. As we can see in this clip, Katara reaches for Sokka's club and rushes out of the frame. I had three simple tasks drawn up for this section, and those are 1. Draw in the background, aka icebergs, hello old friend. 2. Complete Sokka's arm as he flails around. And 3. Draw in Katara as she completely exits stage left. Moving on to our first task, and this was a piece of cake, er, ice. The previous video gave me more than enough experience drawing in icebergs that I was completely in my elements. Maybe I'm a waterbender at heart. The process went by relatively quickly as we can see here, and then I moved on to the next checkpoint which was to complete Sokka's arm. Immediately it felt very different drawing in a character's body part for each frame, as opposed to drawing in a million icebergs and relying on keyframes to move them across the individual images. In this attempt, I had to draw in my approximation of Sokka's arm, and make sure that it doesn't look too off from each other both lengthwise and widthwise. Luckily, I still recalled the advice from my last video, where no individual frame had to look 100% perfect. Instead, I just had to make sure they all flowed together well from my animation to the original. After completing my inking, I decided to test out how it looks, and I thought it flowed pretty well, so I decided it was time to color it in. I had hundreds upon hundreds of hours of experience with coloring books as a wee lad, so this wasn't anything new. After I had completed coloring all the different shades of blue, I moved on to my third and final hurdle of this scene, and that was to draw Katara. I honestly thought I would have a harder time with her as I had to draw in the character fully, but using the previous frames as a reference, I was able to get this portion done in no time. Here is the completed product. Okay, I don't want to toot my own horn or I guess air bison whistle too much, and I know that there are inconsistencies if you look around, but this came out so much better than I expected, and it really got me hyped for the rest of the video. The next shot I chose is a wide view of Katara and Sokka jumping on these little mini icebergs. Apparently mini icebergs are called Bergy Bits or Growlers, and I think that's just an adorable name. With this scene I could have easily filled out the sides like I normally do, but I wanted to try something different from my previous video. For this shot, I decided to move over the image to the right, which gave me a lot of space on the left to draw in our main iceberg. It was a relatively quick process because I simply had to copy and paste the iceberg in another scene, and just edit it a bit, and yeah, this took me almost no time at all, and here's that completed scene. Hopping along, and we get a closer look at Katara and Sokka playing Frogger with more Bergy bits, and I simply move the image to the other side of the screen, so I can have the focus be primarily on Katara and Sokka. And surprise surprise, but I drew more icebergs. And I honestly think I've said that word more times in my previous two videos than in my entire life before. But anyways, I finished the water as well, and quickly got to work on our characters. I drew the other half of Katara, and because she was so small in this image, I didn't need to add too many details, which was good. After completing a bit more frames, it was finally Sokka's turn. 
I knew that for this attempt, I had to draw Sokka in the blank space behind Katara. Luckily, I decided to work smarter and not harder, and since we already have Sokka jumping over these growlers in the same clip, I simply traced over him in later frames and plopped the tracings back to where I felt Sokka was going to be in reference to his younger sister. It looked good from what I could tell, but unless Sokka became an airbender overnight, he needed his very own Bergy bit to jump on. I colored everything in a wide variety of different colors, and by that, I mean blue. Afterwards, I anxiously checked out the completed products. I thought it looked pretty good, and looking closely, we can definitely see where my drawings end and the original animation begins, but I was very pleased with how it all turned out. Just don't pay too much attention to this Bergy bit. The next segment covers the iconic scene of the iceberg in its full glory. I didn't want to mess with this scene too much, so I just filled in the sides and let the vastness of this solid hunk of water speak for itself. It also makes this prior scene funny seeing how Katara thought Sokka's club would be enough to break out our titular character from this massive ice prison. She was right in the end, but it's still funny in retrospect. Let's fast forward a bit into the episode, and I chose this scene because I was a huge fan of Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Awards growing up, and I loved when celebrities would get the slime dumped on them. Although, I think Sokka would vastly prefer that over what he got in the show. I was actually super excited to draw in Appa's snot, which isn't something I thought I would ever say in my life. I couldn't think of a better way to spend my Wednesday night, so I hunkered down onto my desk and got to work. Luckily, Appa is a big, chunky furball, and his body completely covers the left side of the frame. I moved on over to the right side where all the boogery action would be happening, and I quickly got the background done, you know, as I do, and then got to work on the 100 year old snot that called Appa's nose its home for the past century. This super green mucus is only a few frames long, so there wasn't much to animate, but here is the scene moments before disaster. I moved over to Sokka's unfortunate reaction, and truth be told I had some difficulties with this shot. This short 3 second clip took me quite a while to complete, and you'll be able to see why soon enough. First thing I did was move the scene over to the right to give Sokka's arm more focus, and I got started on the background per usual. I had difficulties with the iceberg which got me a bit flustered. Something about it just didn't look right, but I figured I could get back to it later. I moved over to Sokka's arm and it started out very simple enough. Only his elbow was out of frame and I drew it in, no problem. The issues began when his three-fingered gloves started moving outside of the 4x3 worlds and also started changing arm position and angles. I tried my best to get the hands to look as good as it can be, but I really wasn't feeling what I was able to accomplish. But I figured maybe it'll look good with the snot all over it. I ended up using the same tactics from the wave scene in my previous video and just eyeballed where I thought the slime was going to be and crudely colored everything else in. There was pretty much no consistency with the snot and it looked less like a gooey substance and more like mucus venom slithering around Sokka's hand. Like a bird in the wind. I knew that it looked real bad, so I decided to scrap it to give the hands and the snot one more try. On my second attempts, I focused a lot more on Sokka's glove and tried to rely heavily on the onion skin feature in the flipbook mode. The onion skin feature allows you to see the drawings done on the adjacent frames as a reference, which is what I did, and I carefully drew the gloves. Instead of completely showing the palm like in the first attempt, I decided it might be better if we slowly moved the angle of his hand back to where it was originally, and that meant I can reuse the images from earlier frames. Looking at this rough outline, and I think it looks like a huge improvement. I used the onion skin again to match the slime between the images, and made sure that this time they didn't have a mind of their own. I slowly colored in everything, and at this point my neck was in so much pain from looking down too much. If anyone has any tips on how to speed up this coloring process, please let me know, because I really don't want my neck to end up looking like Coraline's father. Anyways, I got the coloring done, and I'll show you both attempts. I'm not the biggest fan of how it turned out still, but I will have to say the second attempt is, in my opinion, miles ahead of the first one. Moving forward even more, and we have Aang in the Southern Water Tribe. And while this might seem like a simple scene to animate, it gave me some issues due to the nature of Procreate Dreams. In case you haven't noticed or didn't watch my previous video, but this animation software that I'm using doesn't have a feature to create straight lines like in the original Procreate application. I was getting a bit overwhelmed scrubbing through the scene because I didn't know if I wanted to copy and paste a straight line however many times. So to take my mind off of it, I decided to draw in the curve from the glider, 
and well, I was busy for a few minutes. After my slight diversion ended, I had to get back to the lines, and I figured that I would need some physical assistance, but I couldn't for the life of me find a ruler in my room, so I ended up using a deck of cards as a makeshift ruler to create the lines. The process was very tedious, but I still enjoyed seeing Aang's glider fill up more of the screen. Eventually, I got everything sketched out and moved on to another bout of neck pain before I found myself finishing up on the coloring, which was simple enough. But I wasn't completely done because I also had to take into account Sokka, but since he doesn't require any straight lines, I was able to complete his portion in a very quick and somewhat painless manner. And here it is. The next scene was pretty easy since it was a stationary background and I glossed over it pretty easily. The following clip however was more of the same as the glider one, as I had to use my deck of cards to complete Aang's glider, as his desperate attempt to show off ends with him crashing into Sokka's less than sturdy fort. Poor Sokka can't catch a break, but I definitely can because that is my last scene, and here it is. As you can see, I specifically chose moments from the pilot episode where we had movement from our characters. I also decided to get cheeky with the placement of some scenes to keep the focus away from the center so much. And honestly, I've been having a blast with this project so far. I also want to thank everyone so much for the support in the previous video. It means so much to me that a good majority of you liked the video since I worked really hard on it. I also want to say thank you for allowing me to reach 1000 subscribers. It may not seem like a big number for those of you watching, but for me it absolutely means the world. I do plan on making videos about random movies or shows again like my other ones, but I also do plan on making more animation work either on Avatar or whatever you would want to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I worked really hard on this video as well and I really really hope you enjoyed it. I also hope you have a great rest of your day, and till next time, bye.